I started a sneaker collection with just a $20 bill, and now I'm gonna buy, sell, and trade my way up to a pair of $20,000 Nike mags. Or $21,000, I don't even know what they're going for right now. These look basically brand new, that's crazy. But before we dive into things, I wanna give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video and also a brand that I credit with a lot of the success of this series, and that's Scentbird. Now you might be thinking to yourself, how does Scentbird help the $20 sneaker collection? Well, in a phrase, smelling good. I think a lot of the success that I have in the $20 sneaker collection is because I smell so good, and that's because I use Scentbird. Okay, all right, well maybe it's not entirely due to Scentbird, but I think smelling good helps. Right? Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that allows you to shop over 600 different fragrances for both men and women. Not only that, Scentbird is a super flexible subscription service and if you don't want fragrances that month, you can just pause the service. Scentbird allows you to try new designer fragrances each month starting at just 16 bucks and not only that, you can switch up the fragrances each month. And each one of these little containers, which on a side note you can actually just twist to open which I thought was pretty cool, actually houses enough fragrance for you to use for 30 days. And you can also pull out the fragrance from this little twisty guy if you want to actually see which fragrance fragrance it is. This is Hugo Boss. I was going to kind of surprise you guys and tell you guys what I got, but now you guys know one of them is Hugo Boss. And speaking of which, let me tell you about the four fragrances that I got this month. Not only that, every fragrance that you get actually comes with this really nice little card that tells you about the fragrance and the ingredients that are inside it, which I thought was pretty cool. So the first fragrance that I got was Cartier Santos de Cartier. The second one was Prada La Homme. The third one was Mercedes-Benz Sign. And the fourth one is Hugo Boss, the one we just checked out. And the name of this one, which I thought was the best thing, was Boss Bottled Night. You're having a boss night tonight, boy. <laughs> Actually, let me smell it, see if it's a Boss Bottled Night out. Oh yeah, that's Boss. Hugo Boss. So, if you'd like to check out Scentbird for yourself and smell good all the time, make sure to click the link in the description below and use my code SETHF30 for 30% off your first month. But now, let's dive back into it. So, if this is your first time watching this series, I definitely recommend starting from the beginning because there's like 23 other episodes that are really worth going through and also it'll show you how we got to this point. And of course, you can do that by clicking the link at the top of the screen or in the description below. But to fill you guys in on where we're at with the sneaker collection fund, at the end of last week's episode, we had $500 $118.78. And the good news is we did end up selling some sneakers that I've been sitting on for a while that I was kind of getting sick of looking at. And also with Black Friday coming up, I'm trying to clear out all of the inventory that I have just so that I have a lot of money to blow on Black Friday. So I'm actually going to drop the prices on everything on my eBay store just because I want to move it out as quickly as possible. And honestly, I'm fine with taking some losses because I want to have just a huge pot of money for Black Friday so I can buy as many sneakers as possible at just great prices. Hopefully great prices. And of course, I'm going to be dropping a $20 sneaker collection video from Black Friday. I cannot wait. It's gonna be a blast. But to fill you in on what sneakers we sold, the first pair was that pair of Air Jordan 2 Decons that I picked up from Plato's Closet last week. So that pair I bought for 40 bucks and I ended up being able to sell it for $127 on eBay, an incredible turnaround. And after fees and shipping, I was able to add $128.45 back into the sneaker collection fund, which means we had a pretty incredible net profit of $88.45. I know last week I was kind of bummed about missing out on the OG low Air Jordan 2s, but uh, I'm happy with these. Next, we sold the Yeezy Desert boots that I've been sitting on for a while. I picked those up at Buffalo Exchange for 120 bucks, and I ended up selling them on eBay for 187. That was a pair I was actually kind of conflicted about. It was in my exact size. It was a pair of Yeezy boots that I really did kind of want, and it had a StockX tag, which while that doesn't guarantee that the shoe's authentic because people fake StockX tags, I was pretty sure it was legit, and uh, I wouldn't have been mad if I had kept it. So after the fees and shipping, we were able to add $184.88 back into the sneaker collection fund, which meant that we had a net profit of $64.88. So after adding those sales to our sneaker collection fund, we now sit at $832.11. Oh, and actually, before I forget, I also returned those Air Jordan 13 Lows, the Singles Day Air Jordan 13 Lows. I bought them for 200 bucks. I returned them for 200 bucks. Uh, if I had tried to sell them, I would have lost like 60 bucks. It just wasn't worth it. So after that, our sneaker collection fund is actually up to $1,032.11, a much better number. So at this point, I think we should go thrifting. So the first stop of the week was Goodwill. Not the place that I usually start, but not a bad place to start. But unfortunately, because we're getting closer to Christmas and the holidays, things are getting harder and harder to find 
even at Goodwill. The first pair that I found was this pair of Nike Shocks. It actually looked like it was in pretty decent condition. There was some gum on the outsole and the upper wasn't too bad. It wasn't even priced that badly, but I just don't think the market for Nike Shocks is that hot, even though it's one of those like iconic Nike sneakers. Right on the other side of the aisle, something took me by surprise, and that was these two pairs of boxed Adidas shoes. They both seem to be pairs of boxed Galetto cleats. I've never heard of these cleats before. I'm not too familiar with cleats myself, but they seem to come in kids' sizes or youth sizes. It looks like they came in a size 13K. Both pretty much brand new. I don't think there was any wear on them. I considered it, but after checking the comps on eBay, they weren't really moving for anything. One pair that did catch my attention, though, was this pair of Nike Air Max 720s, a pair that the air unit goes almost the entire way around the sneaker. Obviously, the shoe was worn pretty heavily. You might have seen the heel drag on the back of the sneaker, but for $10.49, I was kind of considering it. With Air Max shoes, heel drag is a little scary because once you wear it through, the air bubble just pops and that's that. But for $10.49, it was something that I thought I'd walk around with and think about. Unfortunately, once I picked up this shoe, though, I realized that the entire sock liner of this sneaker was destroyed. Maybe it had been worn so much that the heel portion ripped. I don't know what the deal was, but after seeing that, just not worth it. My next stop was one of my favorite places to go in Center City, and that's Buffalo Exchange. I'm sure by this point you guys know that. Now, with Buffalo Exchange, a lot of shoes do end up sitting on shelves, especially if they're priced a little bit too high, like that pair of Yeezy Quantums that we've seen every time we've come in here for the last like four months. But the first pair I found was this pair of, I'm assuming, Westbrooks. I've never seen this pair before. Maybe it's a newer model or a low model, but I don't think there's really much value there. Then I found this pair of Adidas Ultra Boost in a size 13. It looked basically brand new. The boost was very, very white. The insole of the sneaker hadn't really been worn down and it was priced pretty well at 45 bucks. The colorway wasn't bad. I don't think it flies off eBay shelves, but it's something that I'll definitely consider. But again, this week, because I'm trying to save up for Black Friday, I didn't want to blow too much money right off the bat. Next, I found one of my favorite New Balance running sneakers, the New Balance 1080 V11. I actually just put this shoe on my top 10 New Balances of 2021 and 2022 list. It's an excellent running sneaker. It's incredibly comfortable and I also think it looks pretty good. New Balance has been killing it both in the performance and in the lifestyle aspects of their brand. I'm in love with the brand. New Balance, if you ever want to collab with me, hit me up. that will be sick. <laughs> right next to that was a pair of Air Max 90s in this interesting sort of like mid-top variant. I've never seen these before. Maybe it's like a winterized version or something, but it was a shoe that I really don't know much about. I honestly probably should have checked up the comps on eBay, but I just didn't think there was any value there. Another kind of weird shoe that I found was this pair of, I guess, Air Max 97s or some sort of variant of the Air Max 97 with the Air Max 95 neon colorway plastered onto it. Definitely a weird looking sneaker. I have no idea what these are. Let me know in the comment section down below. But after not finding much else, I decided to grab the Ultra Boost. And as you guys can see, I'm wearing the Salehi Bembury New Balance 574. It's one of my favorite pairs of the year. After that, I stopped at another one of my go-tos and that was Plato's Closet. And the first pair that I found was this pair of Puma Thunder Spectras. This shoe was looking really, really clean. It came in black, blue, and orange. It wasn't my favorite colorway of the Puma Thunder Spectras. And unfortunately, I don't think they have value anymore, but it was still a nice shoe to find. Then I found a pair of Air Max 270 Reacts, a pair that was very popular for like a brief amount of time and now I think it's just kind of a shoe that people don't seem to care about anymore. This colorway was really clean, it was white, green, and blue. It's a relatively comfortable sneaker but not one that I'd wear that often just because the heel to toe transition is a little weird for me. It was priced a bit too high and just not something that I needed to pick up. An aisle over they had their Christmas section and they had green and red colored shoes. Nothing that crazy but it was kind of nice to see some Christmassy sort of stuff out even though it's not even Thanksgiving yet. Surprisingly they still had that pair of insanely fake mashup Air Jordan Yeezy off-white amalgamations. So surprised those are still sitting on shelves. Who would have guessed? And then I found this pair of SF AF1 mids in this really nice blue and gum colorway. I think this is a women's size. I don't think it came in men's sizing, unfortunately, but it was a nice looking pair of shoes. I remember like two or three years ago when these shoes were insanely popular. They're not really that popular anymore. And unfortunately, this shoe was priced at around 50 or 60 bucks. I don't remember exactly what it was priced at, but I remember checking my comps on eBay and this shoe just not being worth it. So decided to leave it. One pair I did find that I was really excited about was this pair of Air Max 270 React ENGs. This pair was slightly different than the other pair of 270 Reacts that I found, except the thing that really caught my attention was that this shoe came in the classic neon Air Max 95 colorway. This is a shoe that was priced pretty well. I believe I got it for $24 after all was said and done. And for that price, I am more than happy to take the risk. So I decided to pick this shoe up. 
So we ended up having one more sale this week and that was the Ultra Boost that we had just picked up from Buffalo Exchange for 45 bucks. Those sold on eBay for 67 bucks, which left us with $57.71 to put back into the sneaker collection fund. Meaning that after we subtract the original $45 that we originally spent on these shoes, we came out with a net profit of $12.71. So after selling those Ultra Boosts, we ended up with a sneaker collection fund of $1,020.82. Later that week, I decided to stop by Circle Thrift in North Northeast Philadelphia, I guess kind of in the Fishtown area, one of those thrift stores that usually has some pretty decent stuff. And unfortunately, today was not one of those days. I did find a pair of Air Max 2090s, which was a shoe that I think came out first last year. The shoe was in relatively good condition, but unfortunately, it was missing its insole, which for me is a deal breaker. I just, I don't like finding insoles for shoes. It's just not worth it for me, so I had to put these guys back. Right next to them was a pair of Nike Kyrie's in this maroon and yellow colorway. Actually, a nice looking pair of sneakers, but unfortunately, there was some pretty hefty heel drag and some wearing on the sock liner and no insoles again. So although the shoe looked decent from a distance, it was not something that I was willing to pick up. It just wasn't worth the effort that would have to go into cleaning it and making it somewhat salvageable. So decided to put this pair back. In the women's section, I did find this pair of Puma RSXs in this insanely bright pink and yellow colorway. It was priced at 22 bucks, not a terrible price, but I just don't think there's much resale value here. And for shoes that I don't think I can flip right off the bat, I'm gonna leave. Right before I left, I decided to look through their glass case, which is where they keep most of their more high-end sneakers. And I did find a pair of Air Jordan 5. This was a pair of stealth gray shy pink Air Jordan 5s, I think is the exact colorway of it. The shoe was priced at 45 bucks. It looked like it was in pretty decent condition, but unfortunately on eBay, the pricing was so inconsistent and there was really no sold listing, so I wasn't willing to take the risk. So for the last stop of the week to Plato's Closet, I decided to do something completely different, which you can probably see. I decided to strap a GoPro to my chest and walk around and see if that made looking for sneakers easier because I can use two hands. So the reason I was doing this was because I wanted to test it out for Black Friday because I know Black Friday is just gonna be a mess and I wanna be able to use both hands to push people out of the way. I'm really hyping this video up, but I wanted to be as prepared as possible and I wanted to do a test run because I didn't know how stores were gonna feel about me walking around with a GoPro. I'm still not 100% sure, no one seemed to say anything Thing when I was walking around Play-Dohs, but uh, <laughs> I just wanted to test it, see if I had the balls to do it. So um, it was it was an experience. I did find a pair of Air Max Zeros in this nice black and red colorway. They were popular back when they first came out, but unfortunately there's no resale value now. I would love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below what you think of this GoPro camera angle and whether you'd like to see this more, I guess, almost first person view. It's kind of like on my chest, so it's not really a first person, it's kind of like a chest person view. <laughs> I don't know. If you guys want to see more about my tech stuff, make sure to check out my tech YouTube channel. There will be a link to that in the description below. I'm going to do a full review of this GoPro in the next couple days, so make sure to stay tuned for that and subscribe to that channel if you haven't yet. But as I walked around the store, the only thing that really caught my attention was this pair of Nike Prestos in white and black. But I think I've seen this shoe sitting at Plato's Closet for a couple weeks. Maybe I'm wrong. I just think that I remember seeing it. And because it hasn't really moved, I just don't know if there's much value there. So not really willing to take the risk. Again, trying to save all that money up for Black Friday. This video is going to be crazy. Make sure to stay tuned for that and subscribe if you haven't yet because this video is going to be nuts. But overall, I would say the first run of the GoPro chest mount test was a success. Make sure to let me know your thoughts of it in the comment section down below. Okay, so now that the thrifting is done for the week, we've still got a good amount of stuff to do in this video. In fact, I've got two packages to unbox, one from Trade Block and one a pair of sneakers that I actually won through a raffle. Super excited about that pair. Not only that, I wanted to tell you guys about a pair that I just got in the sneakers app. I know, I got another pair. It's crazy. I can't believe it. <laughs> So last week we saw the release of the Air Jordan 1 Bordeaux, a shoe that looked very similar to the Kodot JPs, except instead of having blue on the upper, it was a Bordeaux like maroon wine color. And I don't know if there was just a bunch of pairs or maybe I have insane luck on the sneakers app, but for whatever reason, I was able to get a pair in a size nine for retail price, 170 bucks. And luckily enough, because I live in the Philadelphia area, there is no tax on essentials like sneakers and clothing, which means that I got them for $170 flat. I didn't pay shipping or anything like that. And uh, I kind of can't believe I hit on these. I haven't hit on a pair of Jordan 1s since like the Electro Oranges. Unfortunately, those Jordan 1s didn't come in in time for me to unbox for you guys, so it'll have to be next week's video. In fact, right now it says that they're slated to ship or arrive to me on Thanksgiving, which I don't think is right. I don't think anything ships on Thanksgiving, so maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Laser ship is a wild thing, so we'll see. But right now I have these shoes listed on Trade Block. I don't know if I'm planning to sell them, keep them, or trade them. The uh, going rate on StockX is like 197 for the lowest ask, and then I think if I were to sell them to the highest bid, which is 190, I would end up with 167, so a $3 loss. So I think I am probably going to trade them or sell them on eBay rather than selling them on StockX or Go just because I could get more money for it. So I'm kind of stoked on these. I love Jordan 1s. Um, I know it's not the most 
lucrative pair of shoes in the world, but it's something. But why don't we dig into some of these unboxings that I just got in actually today. Uh, one is a package from Emilion Dor ALD, and the other one is actually from Trade Block, a pair of shoes that we traded for. A lot of you guys probably know exactly what that is, but I'm excited to see them in person and see if they actually are as represented. So uh, let's just start diving into these. So this first package is the package from ALD. This is a pair of shoes, obviously a pair of New Balances, that um, I actually really wanted for the collection personally, but unfortunately I did not win the color that I wanted. I got the, the color that um, isn't bad, but it's not one that I would wear a lot, so I'm fine with putting these in the $20 sneaker collection. I did use $20 sneaker collection money as it was, so I probably would have just kept them if it was the colorway that I wanted. But uh, because they're not in the colorway that I wanted, I'm probably going to sell them or trade them or something. Most likely trade them. Um, but here they are. This is the box for the ALD New Balance 993s. This is a pair of shoes that released last week. I got early access because I buy a lot from the ALD. But uh, let's pop the top on this guy, see what we've got. Here we go. I'm actually really excited to see these in person. I've never seen a pair of these in person. Whew, look at these. Look at these boys. Oh, these are pretty nice, actually. So these are the, uh, well, I guess they're the ALD 993s. I don't think there's an official name for this collaboration, but this is the brown colorway. It's it's called something like weird, like the brown, brown dirt colorway or something. I don't know what it's called. It's a weird name. It's like a non-appealing name, I'm gonna be honest. It comes with, uh, well, it looks like it comes with a couple different sets of laces. You've got brown, you've got green and brown, and then it looks like they've already got black laces started in the shoe. But the material quality on the shoe feels really nice. You've got brown suede, you got some brown meshes, some greens, some black on the midsole and outsole. It's a very similar shoe to the 992. I think that's because it's sort of an iterative improvement over that shoe. And ALD has been reviving a lot of New Balance silhouettes. I don't know if the 993 was completely dead and gone, but I think it was one of those shoes that just doesn't get produced that often. And ALD uh, decided to do a collaboration on it and create something that looks pretty nice. Now, I definitely think this 993 is sort of more of a sleeper. Like, this is the kind of shoe that you could wear pretty much anywhere. And unless you knew anything about ALD or New Balance, you would have no idea what these were. You probably just think they were brown New Balances, which they are, but there's something a little bit more special than that. But uh, yeah, out of the two shoes in the collection, there was a blue and white pair and this brown and green pair. I definitely preferred the blue and white pair. This one isn't bad though. But because, although I really love this collaboration and I do like this shoe, I think I might prefer to trade this for something that I actually really, really want or something that can get me a lot more value. So I'm gonna throw these up on Trade Block. If you guys wanna check me out in Trade Block, there will be a link in the description below. I've got a couple other sneakers on Trade Block, so if you guys wanna trade really anything for anything, as long as I'm getting a slightly better deal. I'll take it, most likely. So speaking of Trade Block, this is the pair of shoes that we traded for on Trade Block. So for this pair of shoes, we traded the ALD New Balance 550s in green and gold. We traded the Championship Red Nike Dunk Lows, and we traded the Ochre Foam Runners. All of those shoes are great. All of those shoes were brand new. All of them I wouldn't have minded keeping in the collection. I do already have a pair of the New Balance uh, 550 ALDs in that colorway, so I wasn't too worried about keeping those, but the Foam Runners I kind of wanted to keep, and the uh, Championship Red Nike Dunks I wouldn't have minded keeping either, but I'd rather have these. But let's check these out. This is a pair of... Off-White Air Jordans. You guys probably already know what these are. You definitely know what these are if you watched last week's episode. But honestly, this was a pretty even trade. I do think I came out on top ever so slightly, maybe by like 50 bucks. So it's not like I got like a crazy trade, but at the end of the day, um, I wouldn't expect someone to trade um, one of their grails for, you know, some shoes that they don't think is worth it. But I've got to say the box itself is in excellent, excellent condition. Very, very nice. Let me pull out the receipt. Uh, oh, we've got the trade block authentication card right here. But yeah, these look very nice. So now let's uh, check out the shoes themselves. Here we go. Whew, look at that. They look almost brand new. That's crazy. Oh man, look at these boys. Wow, they these look basically brand new. That's crazy. Oh, they come with all the laces too. I mean, they should come with all the laces, but that's crazy. Ooh, this is a pickup. That's not, these are in nicer condition than my pair. <laughs> that's crazy, wow. They even smell new. I shouldn't have smelled them because someone's definitely worn these, but they smell great. <laughs> this is insane. You know what these would go well with? These would go well with the uh, brand new Apothecary drop dropping on Black Friday, which uh, by the way, we got a video done and it looks sick. But yeah, those socks drop on Black Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern time on apothecary.com if you guys want to grab any of them. Super excited about this collection and also super excited about this shoe. This shoe is incredible. In fact, we've used the Off-White Jordan 5s to take a lot of pictures with Apothecary socks before, so. This is one of my favorite sneakers in my collection, honestly. And the fact that the condition is this good, 
is nuts. I actually have gotten a bunch of trade offers on trade block as soon as these got delivered. Here, let me uh, read you guys some of the offers. And honestly, some of them I'm considering taking. So we've got people offering like three different sets of shoes, Sakai Clot LD Waffles, Air Jordan 1 Shadow 2s, Air Jordan 3 White Cements, that's one trade. We've got another trade which I actually counter offered for uh, Off-White Nike Dunk Lows, Hyper Royals, and um, Kentucky Dunks. That's the one that I want to take. That was my counter offer. I forget what the original offer was. I think it was for um, the Off-White Nike Dunk Lows and uh, some sort of Sakai. It was a Fragment Sakai, that's what it was. That one was close to being the right value, but not exactly what I wanted. If he accepts this offer, I'll be happy with it, but uh, I don't know if he will, because it's kind of a, a more stiff offer for sure. But um, now that I know how good the condition of these shoes are, I mean, I could get I can get a good amount of money for these. That's crazy. I kind of want to keep these too. These are nuts. So I guess if you guys want to add these to your collection, send me your most competitive offer on Trade Block, and uh, I might accept it. I'm blown away by how nice these look. That's that's kind of nuts. So I guess that rounds off the episode for this week. So in addition to these Off-White Air Jordan 5s, the ALD New Balances, and a couple other sneakers in the collection, we are finishing off this week with a sneaker collection fund of $850.82, which honestly isn't bad. Like I said, I'm trying to get rid of as many pairs as I can before Black Friday. This pair might be the exception though, because this pair is in such good condition it's crazy. But I guess that pretty much wraps up episode 24. Don't forget to check out Apothecary's latest drop this Friday, Black Friday, at 11 a.m. Eastern Time on apothecary.com. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.